So welcome today to Zoom in, Zoom out uh, with the beautiful Michelle Levadomi. She is going to be um, presenting um, for the next hour, but if we, I think if we go over a little bit, we're fine, right? Yeah. So um, just a reminder that uh, fill out those evaluations because at the end of the week, there'll be a draw for two, four, two, two hundred, two, four hundred dollar um, gift cards. So, you know, that's a good uh, incentive. So fill out the surveys. I think they'll be sent out today and that'll be at the end of the week. And then today um, at the end, there will be a draw for uh, a gift card from Nietzsche Gear. And that was donated for today. And I would like to welcome everybody and I see people are still signing on and I'm glad to see that because I think this is a very important topic to talk about, especially in these times and, you know, being in this, you know, um, shut down right now and going into Christmas and just, you know, everything being so uncertain. Um, another thing that would might help is if you, uh, with the broadband to delivery is if you, turn your cameras off and you mute yourself, then um, there's, there'll be no interference and people can uh, you know, hear a little bit better. So with that being said, I am going to introduce Shal, who is our speaker today. She's usually our, uh, co our MC and I'm her co-MC. And uh, she is a Nihiao Iskew Cree woman with a passion for wellness, social justice and community development. She is a member of Kawatu's First Nation, and while her roots are in Saskatchewan, she has called Edmonton home for the past 20 years. She is the Assistant Director at the Edmonton Native Healing Centre. She is an entrepreneur with her own business called Iskew Health, promoting health and wellness in various capacities. Zumba, meditation, boot camp, fitness, kickboxing, wellness, and retreats. She believes movement is medicine and connection is everything. So with that, welcome, Michelle, and the floor is yours. Woohoo! Well, thank you so much, Shauna. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday. Um, so you're part of the Alberta Can Do um, Links to Learning this morning, although we have three other sessions that people are welcome to join, no matter where they're where they're from. So I'm really honored that you have decided to come spend a little bit of time with us this morning. Um, thank you. Many, many, many moons ago, when I was young and fearless, I was dabbling in music. So I play piano, I write songs, and I had wrote about 12 songs. And I thought, you know what? I feel like I need to lend these songs to the world. I need to lend my voice out there to the world. So I thought I'm going to put on a concert. And so started to roll out this plan, put in a lot of time on the keys, was practicing, practicing, practicing. The day of the concerts, um, we're doing a rehearsal and sound check, and I am bombing like bombing like I couldn't remember words of like my I couldn't remember what the next note was I sounded awful and I just like panic and I look over at my friend and I'm like have this look of panic like what the heck am I doing who the heck do I think I am that I could do this that I could pull this off and this is gonna be awful so all of this dialogue's going on and so she comes over to me quickly and she starts to she starts to fan my flame. She's like, you know what? You're getting you're getting the the rough stuff out of the way, right? You're getting rid of it. You're making room for the superstar that I know you are. So she's speaking all the, these good words of affirmation and just really building me up. And I think having a strong support system is so essential. So consider that I am your friend this morning in your corner. I'm here to remind you of you. I'm here to remind you of some important um, self-care routine, uh, mental health 
because I'm sure you know a lot. I'm sure you've read a lot. I'm sure, I'm sure you've sat in some other webinars. So I, I feel like you know. There's so much knowledge out there. So I, I feel like you already know. So I'm that friend in the corner cheering you on, fanning your flame, stoking your fire, uh, because I think we're collectively all tired. We're all exhausted. And so I just want to talk about that a little bit. I also want to talk about that, about, um, the gift that you are, the gift that creator has given to only you, the gift of strength, resiliency, power, that up until this day, up until this moment, you have survived everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, that you have that strength, you have that spirit, you have that resiliency that creator has given to you. I'm reading this book. What book are you reading these days? And I would love for you to just use that chat box. We're going to, I'm going to ask, be asking questions throughout today's webinar. So feel free to use that chat box whenever I have these questions. So what book are you reading these days? One of the books that I am reading, and I thought I had it nearby. It's 21 things you did not know about the Indian act. And every fact that I read, I, I'm like, amazed at the strength like I knew our ancestors I know the the ones who have walked before us I knew that they were strong I knew that they were warriors I knew that they were resilient but when I'm reading this I'm just thinking wow how much more I honor our ancestors that creator had given them strength resilience they've given he he's given everything that they needed to survive and we know the same creator today. So that same spirit that our ancestors carried that got them through the worst of the worst in our history, we have that spirit within us. So acknowledge your power, acknowledge the spirit that has been given to you, right? You got this. Sure, the, you know, life has stopped for us, but fan that flame, you know, um, ignite that fire and that spirit that's within you. Sometimes, you know, some days I feel like there's only just like a little spark left. And so I might need to go to ceremony or I need to go talk to an elder or I need to go be around my friends. So it's really, really important for you to have a good support system around you. So I'm going to share my screen. So I just want to say before we get into the meat of everything, just give yourself permission to be here. Give yourself permission to be open, to um, have an open mind and an open heart that you've come here, you're here on purpose, something draw you to this webinar. So take from it all that you can. So give yourself permission to like, you know, if there's chaos going on outside and around your world, just press pause on that and just invite and allow yourself to be in this moment. So I think one thing that's important is to look at our environment when we're learning, when we're working, when we're doing Zoom. Um, it's important to look at your environment. And there's some, some things I love about this picture. Some things that are, that's, that's going right, we'll say. So the first one, right? Your environment is very important um, for where you're learning. I think it's important to have as inspiration around you, motivation around you. So this guy is sleeping on the floor. But what I like is from he, we're going to say he was here in this chair and he got up and moved to get himself down here. All right. So I'm huge on movement. I believe we're, we're meant to move. Our bodies are so incredible and amazing and they're meant to be used. They're meant to be mobile. So, you know, when we sit here, um, sometimes every once in a while, if I'm in a Zoom, Zoom webinar, I'll get up and I'll maybe pace a little bit. I might do some squats if I'm doing a squat challenge that week, but I never just stay in one spot. Like I, getting up and moving, I think is really healthy, getting that blood flow. So I love, even though he's laying down and snoozing and having a nap, 
when he should be paying attention to that Zoom call, right? Like I love that he got up and moved around. So that's one thing I love. The other piece I really like is, see this desk here? Like it is clutter free. I think it's important to create an environment that is, um, doesn't have any clutter that where you can learn because when we have clutter all around us so this was many many moons ago and my friend from Sixika, she um I, we would send each other pictures and i showed her my office and she says to me and this was kind of a wake-up call she's like you actually work in that environment because it was kind of cluttery right and so i understand what she meant right so when we have clutter all around us we tend to have clutter in here so it's kind of or we have clutter up here and then we have all this clutter around us. So it's really important to have an environment where you can learn well, where you feel good to be in, right? So I think that that's an important piece. Um, the other piece I really, really like is that, so he's laying down. So may I encourage you? So he's laying down, but he's laying on his side. You know, after sitting in a Zoom call for after an hour, like there was a couple of times in the last three weeks where I've done, you know, six to seven hour full days on Zoom. And so my back was killing me. So one thing that's helpful is just laying down. When you're done, just go lay on your floor. Let your spine, let your back have a moment just to relax. Because as we're sitting up, like our body, our back, our muscles are working hard to maintain this posture. So we need, we need to give our bodies a bit of a break. So encouraging you to you know, lay on the floor, not on your bed, because then that's, it's nice and soft and cushiony and the same with the a couch. So get onto that floor just for like a minute or two. And if that doesn't feel like I, I would have encouraged you right now to get on your floor, but it's like, oh, come on, it's er pretty early in the morning. So we won't do that today. But if you do get onto the floor later on and you feel that tension in your back, maybe you put your feet, the soles of your feet onto the ground. So you're, you're taking away some of that pressure that you might feel on the back, especially if you're not used to laying on the floor. I, I practice yoga often, so I'm constantly on the floor and laying on my back. So I like that he did get low, he get, did get to the ground. I think that that's important. But one thing he did hear that's um, a big ixnay is the, we got too comfortable. So I think it's important for you to get comfortable where you are. Again, you're creating a good learning and working environment. So it's important to be comfortable, but not too comfortable. So I had this amazing webinar that I was hosting and it was just amazing articulate speakers. And I had invited my coworker to come and it was two hours long. And it was on a Saturday afternoon, and um, I know it was sunny out that day, so it was a it was a good day. And so, I had met up with him on the Monday. I was like, "Hey, what'd you think of that webinar?" And he's like, "Well, truth be told, I fell asleep halfway through. It wasn't the content; it was really good stuff." but I just fell asleep. And if I know my coworker, he was in an environment that was warm. And when you have, you know, a warm place that you want to be cozy, you want to have a nap, it, it tends to make you a little drowsy, right? So check your temperature, right? Not too cold, not too hot, because if you're too cold, you're too busy shivering and thinking about how do I get warm? So you're distracted. Um, but having a, a temperature that is comfortable for you. So I always leave a little window open. So that gives me some of that fresh air. So he fell asleep on this dynamic webinar because he was just too comfortable, right? So we want you comfortable, but not too comfortable. And the last thing I like about this is this cup. And we're going to say this is a cup of good old H2O water. So what do you have around you right now? Do you have a cup? Do you have a glass? Do you have your favorite water bottle? What are you drinking right now? Let me know. And then also, how much water have you had up until this point? I know it's pretty early in the morning. For me to get my daily water intake, I like to um, make sure I drink my 32 ounces before 9 a.m. 
tea. I also saw tea. Somebody's drinking tea. Love that tea. Um, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, it's just when it comes to coffee or tea, it's just a matter of put what it is you put into that. So if it's straight tea, that's awesome. That's great. So water, if you are feeling fatigue, lethargic, you're lacking that energy, the quick fix is water. One of the best gifts that creator has given to us is the gift of water. That's why we protect it. That's why um, we value it and we think that it's important. So water is life. So our brain, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get, I get the Zoom fatigue or the, the brain fog, right? Um, so our brain has requires, or the cells in our brain require the most energy out of all our body. So that's huge right there, right? So water is so important. The quickest way, the most effective way to get that energy level back in your brain cells is to chug a lug to drink your water. So we're all gonna take a moment and we're gonna have a drink of water. So cheers, we give thanks to Creator for this gift that has been given to us that it can replenish us and nourishes us. It's healing. Um, there's so many properties and so many benefits to drinking water. So when we're lethargic, when we're feeling sluggish, get that water happening. So if there's any takeaway today would be that get yourself an awesome water bottle and bring it around with you wherever you go because it will it's life it will help you it will inspire you it will create energy right it will fam it will stoke that fire for you if you need that extra and so we should be drinking eight cups of water a day. So for me, I didn't always like drinking water. So when I learned this fact, right, so I believe knowledge is power. So when I learn something, I try to adjust my life. I try to create those habits to incorporate it into my world. So when I first found out like this benefit of water, this was about 20 years ago, 22 years ago, when I first really understood how important drinking water was, I actually would put out eight cups of water in front of me and drink them. So, so I actually could visually see that I was making sure I was getting. So, and then honestly, this is your body will treat you right if you treat your body right. So it's kind of this reciprocity. So if you give your body all of this goodness, your body will respond. Right. So reciprocity. So you got it. It's up to you to treat your body right. Okay. So we're just going to take a moment. So let's go back to the very first story that I shared about, uh, you know, me just bombing at my rehearsal and my sound check. And I'm thinking, I suddenly have a sore throat. I don't think I can perform at this concert. I am sure in that moment when my friend came over and rushed to just bring an affirmation and to encourage me, I am sure she said, I can't remember because I was, it was full on panic in my head, right? But I'm sure she said, just breathe. It's going to be okay. You got this. You practiced for months. You're just getting rid of all of the icky stuff right now. So I'm sure she said, just breathe. It's a gift. I always say that our breath is our helper that creator has given to us. So we're going to take a moment. So I want you to plant two feet on the floor, sit up nice and tall. I'm a sloucher, yo, straight up. Like I'm like this a lot, right? So this might feel a little foreign to your body right now. I get it. Hands can go onto the thighs and take a deep breath in through the nose and deep exhale. So on that inhale, I want you to take as much air as you can take in. And then that's your cue to begin that exhale, right? So it's a full deep breath. When we make that connection with our breath, it actually is doing something physiologically to ourselves. It actually is calming our nervous system. So imagine that if we just stop and take that deep breath. That helps. And then exhale. 
So do that two more times. Maybe closing the eyes might be helpful. We're so easily distracted. So just breathe. So remember in this that your breath is your helper here. You have um, a system within you that if you just tune into it, if you just connect with it, that will help you. It won't make all of your problems go away, right? Nothing will, right? Um, but it helps you to respond, not so much in a panic mode, not so much out of fight or flight mode, right? So it helps just to bring a sense of calm and relaxation in that moment. So you have access to that all the time. So your breath is really, really important. So I like this quote, deep breaths are like little love notes to your body. I love it. And it's so true. If you just give yourself a chance a couple of times a day to connect with your breath, your nervous system will like have settled. It will have calmed down. So really, really important, especially when we're in, you know, these moments of stress. You got your water, you got your breath. Um, so I'm just going to stop sharing for now. So I, so I had a couple of unfortunate events in the last season. So from the fall equinox till now, I had these, unfor this unfortunate events that had happened. One of them was I had broken two toes. And it wasn't like just like a simple break. Like I'm taught, oh, the pain was unreal. I was limping. I had a swagger going on for many, many weeks. Um, but one of my friends, when I told her, she's like, oh my goodness, you're money makers, right? I have a fitness studio. This, this, this is my thing. And if I can't go, if I can't exercise, if I can't function on my feet well, what am I going to do? So I'm feeling all sorts of stress going on, right? Like my body's feeling it mentally. I'm feeling it. I'm in pain every time I walk. So I'm struggling hard. And so this is going on for four weeks. Right? At first I thought this broke, these broken toes, I'll heal them in like a week, 10 days. I was giving myself that. So I'm like, I'm not a doctor, but I was giving myself that um, thinking. So four weeks go on. I'm still limping. The pain is still unreal. Still was trying to do my normal routine. I still was trying boot camp. Like it was pretty, um, pretty bad, but I was still trying. I was still doing my regular exercise routine. It was still pretty bad, but I was trying. I'm like, I, no one's going to get me down. I'm not going to give up. Not even these broken toes will hold me down. Four weeks and I'm still struggling hard. And in that four weeks, I had a woman tell, you know, when something happens to you and then somebody shares their experience and their story, my friend says, oh, yeah, I broke a toe once and it took me a year to heal. And that was like, <gasps> and I just like my mind just rolled with that story a year. What, what am I going to do in a year? I have fitness classes. I have this, right? So the story that I was beginning to tell myself and that extra stress. It got to me. So I came to a place where I needed to take a whole week off and do nothing. Like I needed to park my butt on the couch, turn on Netflix, order, skip the dishes and do nothing because I needed this to heal. So I thought I'm going to give this a shot. So that was the first lesson in there was I needed to acknowledge what had happened to my body, this little trauma of broken toes, but I also needed to accept where I was. And until I did that, like I was still struggling hard. Right? So I finally came to this place of acceptance and I acknowledged where I was and I needed rest. I needed a break. So I was gonna give it a try. Honestly, if I were to be honest, like 2020, right? Is, if I were to be honest, I didn't really think it would matter. I didn't think it would help, but I was gonna give it a fair shot. Monday comes around. So, and 10 pounds later comes around. Um, Monday comes around, I'm back to my regular schedule, just had a week off. I step out of my bed onto the floor and it was like the heavens opened and the angels were singing. It was a hallelujah moment and there was no pain. 
And in that moment, I just, I first of all said like, thank you creator. But in that moment, I knew the importance of rest and sleep and, and how that's vital, how our body repairs, our body recovers, our body heals when we give it proper rest. I'm gonna share this. So it's okay. So I had to surrender that I had to be okay with just doing nothing and resting because I'm not used to that. So I had to honor that. I actually had to listen to my body. What does it need? Right? So if we just even press pause in, in our world and in our lives and listen to what it is that our body, what we need mentally, what we need emotionally, what we need physically, and then what we need spiritually. If we were just to listen and then to honor it, it makes the it makes a huge difference. So rest is important. It's a, so the question to you right now is how, ma how many hours of sleep do you get a night? So feel free to put it in that chat box. There's no judgment here. But, you know, we should be kind of sitting on seven to eight hours of rest at night, right? Lots of things are happening in our body that need to happen. Our bodies need the rest. And sometimes, not sometimes, somehow in our culture, like in our society is what I mean, that, you know, we've adapted to busy, 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 work hard, hustle hard, right? But we need to rest just as hard. Right. If we're going to function in a good way, you know, um, even to our pro levels of pro productivity in the workplace are that much better when we have a good night's rest. So a couple of years ago, I had um, struggled. I was struggling with some stuff, some interpersonal family stuff. Um, and. I, I would say like I, I, I knew depression in that season of my life. I couldn't sleep at night. I was struggling with insomnia. Like, it, you know, four o'clock came around and I'm still wide awake. And this was going on for days and weeks and months. And I tried a lot of things. Like I would, you know, what is in my toolkit? Like, what am I going to try? And nothing helped. I couldn't shut off my mind. I couldn't shut off what was in my spirit. I couldn't shut off the, the hurt and the pain that I was feeling. So I really believe creator has got her back. So I had, I think it was on Facebook. I saw this, this workshop for meditation. And so let me just say this meditation was never my thing like and yoga never really was my thing either but I start to practice yoga because I knew the benefits and, and all of that and yoga's I mean meditation is part of yoga right so they're kind of like this but it was just something I never really was sold on so I saw this meditation workshop and there was something that I read that just piqued my interest so I went to this workshop and this was the selling point for me. She said, when she was listing all these benefits of meditation, she says, you know, if a person meditates for four hours, that is like an equivalent of eight hours of sleep. And right there, because I would, that's what I was desperate for. I was desperate for sleep. So I needed to hear that. And so that started my journey of wanting to understand what this whole meditation thing is all about. And even if we were to read literature or articles, you know, talking about, you know, the Zoom, Zoom fatigue, being tired or stressed and management, there will always be a piece about meditation in there, right? So I started this journey of learning and, and researching and I signed up for teacher training so I can bring it into the studio and offer it. And it honestly has been life changing for me. So even in the midst of this pandemic, I'm not going to lie, it hasn't been perfect. I remember early on, I kind of had bouts of insomnia, but I turned to what I knew that would help me, right, which is meditation, which was yoga, um, working out, connecting with other people, right. So that's really what had helped me through this whole time. And so we're going to do at the end, we're going to have an opportunity to meditate together. So if you've never done it, or if you're like, no, thanks, because I was like that, 
no thanks you know give give yourself five minutes just to give it a try so we will come back to it we'll, we'll give it a try but it's um it's been a beautiful self-care practice for me and it helps helps me to live a, a balanced life so meditation Oh, this is, I should have turned to this one. And it's very true. Like, I think it's important for you to spend time with you every day, whether it's five minutes, half an hour, an hour, it's really important to, for you to spend time with you. It helps you to get to know yourself. What are my triggers? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my joys? Like get to know you so that you can bring these pieces into your life. Um, so knowing, we would say in meditation, know thyself. Earlier this year, I had proto, went to protocol in the elder because I wanted to, I was looking to do a ceremony, a specific ceremony. And so I went and we had a good conversation. And so she asked me, what is your spiritual practice? What do you do? And so I said, well, like I, I smudge, I have smudge, but I don't, I wouldn't say I smudge every day, um, but I smudge. And then I said, but I do meditate every day. I do pray every day. And she's like, that is so good. Meditation is so good because it also creates an opportunity for you to hear creator, for you to hear spirit as well. Because um, we're busy when we pray, we're busy pu pu pushing out all of these requests re left, right, and center, and we don't make that space to hear from spirit or creator. So that's what she said to me. And then she said, the meditation will help you when you do this ceremony. Right? It will help us to find that focus, to connect with our spirit, to connect with creator, to connect with the land. It really is. And, and she's right. It really helped me with the ceremony that I was involved in in the summer. So meditation, we're going to give it a try. Um, in a, what time is it? In about 15 minutes. So the other story that I'm going to share, so I'm just going to stop the share for this story. So the other story, the other unfortunate event that happened in this season was my condo got water damaged. So from the condo above me, water was leaking. So then it affected my condo. So if there's anything that is like high stress to me that creates that, that's um, level of stress that you you don't know any other way, right? It would be home issues and car issues, like the high. Talk about like that gets me up here with my stress. So now I'm facing uh, a condo issue, water issue. Not to mention, like just prior to that, I had some car issues. So my level of stress was enormous. So the gentleman, the, the guy who was looking at my condo said, okay, we're going to put this, you know, dryer in here, this industrial dryer in here for four to five days. And hopefully we can dry this sucker out so that we don't have to tear any walls down. And I'm like, you know, I'm smudging my home. Like, Come on, creator, work with me here. And, um, so I'm feeling a little stressed and it's hot in my place. I can't sleep at night. So all this is going on. And um, so he comes back and he says, no, we're going to have to tear your walls down. So I had to tear three of my walls down in my laundry slash storage space. So I had to take everything out of my storage and laundry room. And my place is pretty small. So now my place, so talk about clutter now. So I have the stress and now I'm adding on this clutter. I'm, it's out, I'm going, I'm losing my mind. Like I'm just... This is it. I'm like, come on, creator. So I thought, okay, I'm going to turn to my self-care routine. I'm going to turn to my practices. So I decided I was going to take a virtual yoga class one night. So I roll my mat out and I have all this clutter around me. And there's this one posture where we're um, stretching out our spine. So one leg is crossing over and I couldn't even put my leg down because I was just surrounded by clutter and bins and boxes. So I just lay there 
and I, I, you know, begin to cry and just surrender to this feeling, surrender to what is going on. As I allowed myself, I gave myself permission just to feel all the feelings that went with it. And after I had that moment to, up to myself, that moment of honesty, because up until that point, I was like, you know, holding my breath. I wasn't going to cry. I wasn't going to get emotional. This isn't going to get to me. Once I just surrendered and I gave myself permission to feel, um, there was something that changed perspective. So uh, it's something shifted in my mind, right? I believe our minds are powerful. Everything starts in your mind. Everything starts with your thinking. You know, I think, therefore I am. So your mind, you have to know how powerful your mind and your thoughts are. So something shifted in that moment for me. So I needed, I felt like I have to shift my perspective. I have to shift my narrative. I cannot control, you know, the water damage and what needs to happen, but I can control how I respond to this. I can control my environment. So there was something that shifted. So the next day I finished work and then I decided I was going to rearrange my whole place. I was going to create a, an atmosphere that I felt good in and I felt safe in again. So I kind of took my power back. So it was, I was felt out of control, but now I can control. So that's why I put placed so i put the serenity prayer up here right we can't control everything like we can't control um what is going on around us but there are definitely things that we have the power within ourselves so you know when we think of this virus like we can wear masks we can social distance we can make those those pieces right but there's some things i can't control but i can do my very best and it really sometimes starts with a, a perspective, a fresh perspective. So for me, that really changed the game. That changed um, how I responded. The next thing is I want to talk about habits. And I don't know if I have a slide here. So no. So what are, so I want you to write down. So this is a, I love sharing circles because that's where I get my energy. That's where I um, get excited when I hear other people. So use that chat box and say, what is one healthy habit that you have in your life right now? So it's not like a healthy habit. You're going to start tomorrow, but one healthy habit that you have in your life right now. So let's hear those healthy habits. One thing, use that chat box. And I'm just reading some of the sleep. You know, some of you are doing really well with your sleep. Um, so going for walks is awesome. Like making that connection and getting that fresh air. Um, super. Any other habits out there? Oh, I love it. So one person is saying, always oh, saying love you when you leave the house. I think that that's important um, to communicate well, to communicate your honest feelings is really important too. Cutting out carbs. Sometimes carbs leave me lethargic. So I got to sometimes put them off to the side. So that's a good one. No sugary drinks. I love that one. Sometimes I used to rely on the good old Coca-Cola when I was in university to give me that quick pick me up. Um, but as, as much as it gives us that pickup, it crashes us, right? Um, equally as hard. That's what I've discovered with the sugar. Um, somebody's meditating, love it. Over eight cups of water a day, love it. Weight training is huge. Um, exercise is huge. Again, I say that, you know, as a person who owns a fitness studio, I believe in it. Uh, movement is absolutely good, good medicine. So you got some good habits going on. So right now we're in our, our sixth week, our final week of our fitness challenge. And so at the very beginning, I had all the ladies to say, you need to come up with three goals for yourself. What do you want to achieve by this Saturday coming up? So one of my goals was I wanted to do 20 push-ups off my toes. So remember, I was coming off of like sitting on my couch and Netflixing, Netflixing, is that the right word? And um, not being able to properly function off of my broken toes, right? So 20 push-ups was a pretty ambitious for me. But in order for me to get to that goal, right, I had to bring in habits. And I knew that um, 
yoga helps to build that upper body strength for me. I knew that I needed to incorporate push-ups in my workouts. I need to work on my um, upper body weightlifting. So I had to create these habits in order to achieve my goal, right? I would say for all of us that it would be fair to say that our goal is to walk in balance. So being balanced again, mentally, emotionally, physically and spiritually walking in balance. So just take a moment to ask yourself, am I balanced? So I always use a chair as an example, right? So there's four um, legs to a chair. And if we take out one of those, would we sit on that chair? No, because we would fall over, right? So are you balanced? Are you in a place where you're not going to fall over, that you're not going to get overwhelmed? So being in a place of good balance really helps us when that stress comes our way that we're ready to take it on, right? So how balanced are you? So creating those habits in your life to get to that place of balance small things. I always say this, small steps, small habits get you those big results, right? So when you walk away from today, I want you to commit to one habit that you're going to bring into your world. That's going to help you to get to this place of balance. So, some, so something for you to think about, we'd love for you to put that in the chat box. It's, it's something there's something to be said when we vocalize, when we put it out there of what we want to commit to, right? Instead of just keeping it to ourselves, like we put it out there and then creator in the universe, and then you might have some accountability here, you know, can help you to achieve that what you want to achieve, right? So think about one habit that you want to bring into your world that will help you to achieve that overall balance. It's not about being perfect at all. So I'm not saying, you know, perfect that balance, but I'm saying, you know, consciously every day, make sure that balance that your that wheel, you know, I think of the, the medicine wheel teachings is in balance. It's in harmony. So the last piece before we get onto some meditation and also let's take a drink, right? Con continuously. So even to think about, and I meant to say this earlier, but I want you to think about right now, are you feeling thirsty, right? Pay attention to your body. And if you are thirsty, that is your body already saying, help me. It's a red, the, the red flag is like up. Give me some water because that's your body saying is already dehydrated. When you're in this place of thirstiness, your body's already dehydrated. So you should never feel thirsty. So bottoms up everyone. So the last point I just wanted to talk about is routine and how it really is important. And you don't have to have a routine for your whole day, but a, a routine somewhere that gives you a sense of balance, a sense of like, it's, I find a routine is like an anchor. My routine in the, is in, in the morning, right? So I go to the gym. I give myself, I honestly give myself two hours just to putz around my house. I listen to a podcast. I do a little bit of meditation, talk to a creator. I make sure I have that space. So when then when work comes around, I'm good to go, right? So I have a very structured routine in the morning that helps me early on. So back in April, when that pandemic was was full on, like everything was shut down here in Edmonton, everything except for grocery stores and pharmacies. But, I, but however, where I worked full time, we did not close our doors ever. So I was still going, putting myself out there. We had to lay off some staff, which was really hard. Um, one of them was a gentleman who did our janitorial services. So then therefore I had to pick up and scrub toilets and clean floors. Not, I'm not above any of that, but it was just different. Um, so I've had all this extra stuff now that I'm incorporating. And so there's a point in my life where I lost my routine. So I literally would roll out of bed, 
brush my teeth, wash my face, put on some makeup and go to work. And so I carried that energy with me. And it wasn't a good energy that I carried throughout the day. So I missed that routine, that, that medicine, like a good routine, I would say is like medicine for you that gives you the energy that you need, that good energy that you need. So think about the routine that you have in your life. It may be a nighttime routine, maybe it's a mid afternoon routine, but routine, there's something to be said about it. Um, so think about incorporating or even think about your own routine. Maybe you want to share a little bit in the chat box of what you do. Um, routine is really good. So those are a couple of pieces that I just wanted to share today. I mean, there's so much more, but those are, that's just from my experience in the last year, what I know to be true. So having a good support system, drinking your water, uh, meditation slash ceremony, prayers, um, having some good habits um, and a good routine. And I'm sure there's more, get outside, like even between Zoom calls, um, I will go outside that fresh air will wake me up and even that connection to the land is, is really good for my soul too. So getting outside, I think is really, even in this cold weather, all I gotta do is bundle up, get outside. So fresh air. So we're going to just take a moment to do, I'm going to guide you through a little meditation. So be open. Um, if, especially if this is something you haven't done, it's only going to be five minutes. I'm going to play some music. So this music, I really like, like I need white noise when I go to sleep at night. And so there's a, so I have a fan on, so I need that constant noise. There's another noise that's called pink noise. And this is actually noise like, so like a rainfall, like the sound of water would be a pink noise. And that actually also calms your nervous system that, that kind of promotes that rest. Um, so this, we're gonna play for about 30 seconds, this pink noise. So you can, so I invite you to find a comfortable position, whether it's, you know, sitting down, maybe laying down, it's just somewhere that's comfortable, but I just, the only cue here is I, I just want to make sure that your spine is up nice and tall. Um, that just helps to open up the, the airway. So getting into a comfortable position. So I do like to put my palms on my, if I'm sitting down, I like to put the hands, my palms down onto my thighs. Uh, making sure my spine is nice and tall. And then I invite you to close your eyes. Now, if closing your eyes doesn't work for you, because some for some people it doesn't, um, if closing your eyes doesn't work, you're just going to focus on one thing, right? Because the world is so busy and we're constantly distracted. So focus on that one thing. Otherwise, we're going to look, oh, look at that shiny thing, right? So be, find that um, one thing. So I'm going to play this pink noise just for 30 seconds and I want you to breathe taking deep breaths So I just want you to notice how your body feels in this moment. That was about 40 seconds of just being still, of just breathing. Notice, are you carrying any tension in your body? Lots of times we'll carry it in the shoulders. We'll have our hands clenched. Or maybe you hold a lot of tension in your facial features, your jawline. Just try to consciously relax all of your body, all of your being. So this is the loving kindness meditation. It is my most favorite. So I'm going to say it and you're going to repeat after me, whether you say it aloud or you say it to yourself. May I be safe. 
May I be happy. May I be healthy. And may I walk with ease, take a deep breath in. So you're inviting these words, you're inviting these truths to just become part of you and your journey this moment and this day. So we're gonna say that one more time. May I be safe. May I be healthy. May I be happy. And may I walk with ease, deep breath in. So now we're gonna think about the world around us, right? We're just a mere, we're just a mere um, strand in this web of life. Right? So we're all connected to each other, but we're connected to the land, to the sacred waters, to the birds, the animals, the plants, the sky, to all of the people. So we're going to extend this, right? As, as much as we're focusing on us and our wellness and our balance, we need to be mindful of strengthening the world and the circle around us. So you're going to extend this good thought, this good prayer, this good energy to the world around you, wherever it is you live. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And may you walk with ease. Take that deep breath in. And deep exhale out through the mouth. One more breath, just like that. And relax. So you wiggle fingers and toes, circle wrists and ankles. Maybe turn your head from side to side. And then just come back to center, putting one hand on your heart, acknowledging the gift that you are. The gift creator has made you. There's only one you. And it is awesome. So thank you so much for coming today, lending your time, just listening, being part of this. Thank you for all your comments. Um, I really appreciate your presence today. Thank you, Michelle. That was awesome. It was, you know, just, I feel good. I feel like I can tackle the day. Um, you know, everything, are there any questions? Anybody want to ask some questions to Michelle? Do you do online fitness classes that we could be a part of maybe? I sure do. So on, on Wednesdays, I do a virtual yoga on Zoom, free at 7 p.m. Um, I've done some meditation. Um, Zumba is usually on Monday nights. Yeah, so there's lots. Um, you can also check out my, um, I'll type it in the chat, on my website. And you can always shoot me a message um, from my website. So. Health.com. So it's a Squayo Health. A Squayo for those who don't know is woman in Cree. Awesome. Awesome. So just a reminder that um, I don't know how we're going to do the gift card at the end of this for the Nietzsche gear, but um, just a few highlights that I picked up on was um, the laying down. You know, I actually have an inversion table. So I actually go like upside down. I've uh, I've uh, went live on Facebook on my inversion table, so that was something crazy. And uh, drinking water, you know, definitely. I didn't used to like water as well, but then I um, I was actually seventy pounds heavier, and I went with worked out with a personal trainer. And water, you know, just became 
you know, my best friend and I put like cucumber and strawberries and, you know, stuff like that in my water, just infuse it. Yeah. So that's a good idea. Um, toe, I broke my toe last Christmas, kicked my couch and I was told to quit being mad at Christmas. And yeah, it takes, uh, it takes quite a bit to heal, but it healed. Um, and yeah, you know, just, I took notes down and I'm going to follow them because I don't, I want to not have sugary drinks anymore. You know, I want to, you know, more of the water, but sugary drinks are comforting. Um, and you know what, just thank you. And um, Danielle, how are we going to do the gift card for Nietzsche gear? Yeah, I'm just going to answer one question that, um, is there any advice for helping a friend who is stressed but insists they are doing fine and don't need any help? Uh, my first thought is to, you know, pray for your friend, but also check in with your friend. I, I sometimes that friend who does not need any help, but when my friends are consistent and checking in with me, um, sometimes I crack and then I'll invite their help. So don't give up on that friend asking if they need anything, if they, um, if you can help them in any way, I think that that's important as well. So just be a good friend, um, offer the prayers and then show up with a care box or a care package too. That's Absolutely. That was fun this past spring when people were ninjaing people. Yeah. I, I had, I'm not gonna tell, say who I ninjaed, but I ninjaed people and it was fun. I even did the singing, like not this, I didn't sing, but I did the like everybody's kung fu fighting, like, uh, or um, the Mission Impossible team. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you, Michelle from Lisa. What I took away from this is step one, clean my environment to ease my mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Clean, you know, cleaning your, your, your environment. Yeah. Um, and Elizabeth said, me and Danielle will do a draw from attendance today and email the winner. Okay. So that's how now that you want an Ichi Gear gift card. And reminder, fill out those, fill out those surveys because there's a four, two $400 gift uh, visas at the end of the week. And, you know, with that, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll be back January 19th. I think it was said Futurepreneur is going to be doing the webinar, which is a you know definitely helpful. Um, Sammy does good work at at Futurepreneurs, and you know what, everybody like you know today. Thank you again, Michelle. This was such great um, you know information that I'm taking away. You know, hand on my heart, I'm taking you know the inf you know the the some of this information away. Um, Shelly said, thank you for the great tips. One doesn't realize how easy it is to get into a negative mindset and have a great day, everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been in those where I will type something on Facebook and then I'm like, does that really need to be said? And then I erase it. And I almost feel better just erasing it because it's gone. And then, you know, I'll, you know, I just try to be positive and everything because especially like when kids and nieces and nephews and you know your children and you know cousins whatever read it you know you want to be you know good and good and uh you know positive so thank you michelle i need to care for me and have learned to do it before better thank you to you. yes so again thank you round of applause michelle you're awesome have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and best to everybody. Um, somebody's giving a high five, Isaac. Hi, hi. That's Gilbert. So, oh, Bill Elliott had thumbs up. So with that, thank you everybody and have an awesome day and we will see you again.